Hey, what up, boys? So, leading into this month's livestream, I was fully expecting massive improvements to Ashes of Creation's nighttime, and they certainly delivered. What I did not expect, though, was the interesting discussions we had around immersion, mechanics, and MMORPGs in general during our post livestream discussion over at twitch.tv forward slash Narkivus. But before we get into that, our beautiful patrons and cooped out the wazoo Twitch subs and I would love for you to grab yourself a Goopa Cola because today we'll of course be discussing my opinions on the nighttime, but more importantly, I want to try and refine the feedback for this particular video on a subject that has been overlooked when it comes to the immersive design Steven and the team are trying to achieve here. Now, with all that bollocks out of the way, let's begin, shall we? I think it looks great. Here's the question though, right? Does it look too dark? Is it too dark? What I don't like is the fact that I can't see the face. Now, is that a darkness issue? Or is that the fact that the lighting in Ashes of Creation has still not been revamped? Is it a darkness issue? Or is it the lighting issue? Because the lighting has clearly still not been revamped. That's not been done yet. That's still to come. I think it's... I don't think it's a darkness issue. I think it's a light issue. Uh, the, the, the light issue. The lumen issue. Last month, or was it the month before, he did say that there will be significant lighting changes. That is still to come, my friends. That is still to come. Nobody's sitting there and saying that doesn't look like a good scene. Um, it's just too it's just too dark in some areas, isn't it? It's just it, that feels too dark. That that's black as my asshole. Where's the light beams? Why is there no like uh, light beams coming through? Like uh, what's it called? Um, god rays, right? God rays. Right. Why is there no god rays coming off of the moon through the canopy of the tree? Tricking that something to do with lighting too? Because of Pax Day, right? Nobody's sitting there and saying Pax Day's lighting is trash. Pax Day's lighting is some of the best lighting I've ever seen in a game in a video game period. Is that Ashes of Creation's goal here? To have Pax Day level lighting, maybe even better, because it's custom, not out the box Unreal Engine. Here's where I am. I think the skybox looks great, but I also didn't see anything wrong with the skybox from two years ago. How many times do you need to iterate and touch something up and change something and tweak something until it starts to take away from the effect, right? Sometimes you just got to leave shit alone, right? You know, sometimes, boom, it's that, hey, that looks great. Let's just leave it there, right? If you keep tweaking shit and keep adding shit, sometimes less is more, in my opinion. I think less is more, always, always. In 95% of situations, less is more. So I will admit, when he was talking about this, and he was talking about the night time, and he has name plates off, I did look at this, and I did think to myself, actually, do you know what? That does look okay. The problem is that Ashes of Creation is an MMORPG, and an MMORPG has this mechanic called name plates. And name plates is like a label above the creatures in the world to tell you what they're called. You know, that's just a normal mechanic. And then they talk about things like being able to turn nameplates off and being able to turn nameplates on. However, in my opinion, if this is the darkness that they want to go for in Ashes of Creation, then, in my opinion, nameplates on or off should not be a player choice. It should be always off, unless you click on the mob. If they want the dark to be immersive, if they want to go for immersion, then the game should not give players a choice to turn on or off nameplates. They should always be off. And if they go with that route, then I am 100% down for the nighttime being dark because the game will look like shite if players have got nameplates on. That's the biggest problem that I've got with Dark Nights. It's immersion breaking to see a nameplate. So therefore, I think it should just always be off unless you click on the mob itself. The problem is, if it's a player choice, then if you don't have nameplates on, then you're just gimping yourself. It's stupid. Commit to it or don't go for the immersive features. You can't have a cake and eat it too. Choose one and commit to it and then build the game around it rather than giving everyone choice. Choice, 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 choice. 
you can do this, you can do that, you can fucking jerk off your mum, you can jerk off your dad, and it's a fight, and, and it's, everyone can do everything. Choose one and go with it and, and build well-made mechanics around that. Make nameplates only appear in town. But then you've got nameplates popping up all around the city as you're running around the city. It's just shit mechanics. It's a... It's a I, do, I do see where you're coming from, though. I don't know the solution. Here's my opinion, though. If you're going for immersive lighting like this, then you can't have nameplates at the same time because nameplates are a direct contradiction to the immersion that you're trying to build. It's like you're trying to have your cake and eating it too. And at the end of the day, if you're trying to please everyone by giving them the option, isn't that like one of the core philosophies of why MMORPGs are dog shit? Commit to one and build the game around that instead of committing to everything, trying to please everyone. Commit to one or the other, and it looks like to me that you want to commit to the immersion. So scrap the nameplates, unless you click on a mob. You know, I like immersion in my games. I don't necessarily think that MMORPGs need to be immersive. At the end of the day, it's an MMORPG, a game that you play 90% through the UI anyway. I don't necessarily think MMORPGs need to be immersive. They, that's, that's what Pantheon have tried to do. They did the no Dark Nighttime for EverQuest boomers. For these people that are obsessed with EverQuest, who are just obsessed with this pointless shit, what's the point in darkness when nameplates are like that? I just don't get it. Guys, if you haven't got if you haven't got nameplates turned on in an MMORPG, like what are you even doing? I play MMOs like a single player game. Uh I just like the immersion. Uh, I'm just a single I just like playing MMOs like a single player game. That's the what you come across like. Because you don't care about the overall mechanics and what most people will for, will be forced to do. Most people will be forced to turn on the nameplates because by not having nameplates on, you're missing extremely important information. Imagine all nameplates just popped in, popped out as you're running through the world based off distance. What about fade away? I see that comment come up quite a lot. How can you make a 3D feature that is on a separate layer to the world immersion? How do you make that look good? As soon as the first frame of that fade appears, because it's on a separate layer that's not part of the actual world, it's not it, does, it doesn't follow the same art style. It's a 2D element and it's floating in the world. And then it's fading in and fading out. Could that look better? Maybe. Show me it first. Would that look better if it was fading in and fading out as you were running through the world? At the end of the day, I still don't think that if you're going for an immersive world that's trying to immerse people into the game, then I just don't think nameplates should exist. That's my opinion. How would the game feel if there was no nameplates full stop? Again, again, it's an MMO, guys. It's an MMO. You can't not have nameplates. You can't not have nameplates. But as usual, I am just one nerd desperate for a good MMO. And hey, as you made it to the end of this video, you're either a copium addict who's been watching for a while, or a new viewer who's taken a liking to the recent format. And I just want to briefly close with a statement about the direction of the channel lately, because the response has been overwhelmingly positive, far more positive than I expected. For many of you, it's impossible to come and drop by the streams, and that's okay. I stream a lot and at a busy time. However, I felt for a while now that a lot of our discussions go to waste simply because they're lost in VODs that only get about 2k views. So me and my team wanted to figure out a way to try to bring these discussions to you guys. I am by no means saying the usual format that you've been used to is being retired. The usual format is perfect for more precise discussions and speculation. However, as I've been streaming for a whole year now, I felt like I've gotten rather good at presenting myself live and doing it live has also improved my presentation skills in general by a huge amount. The current issue I'm dealing with inside the pandemonium that is my brain is that as Alpha 2 approaches, the usual format will unfortunately become unviable, as I just simply won't have time to make them and stream full time at the same time. Therefore, the conclusion that we came up with was to continue to refine and improve this new format so the quality of the videos do not drop when Alpha 2 arrives. I have a lot of amazing plans for content for the Alpha 2 launch, and I wouldn't want you guys here on YouTube to miss out on them. So I really, really appreciate the warm reception to this new format, because them being easier to edit allows me to create way, way more videos that cover way more topics that the devs can now see. But this... 
this is just the start of the benefits. It's also allowed me to focus on growing the channel outside of YouTube. I've been spending this spare time talking to devs from other projects, talking to other content creators, and really expanding the channel in ways that greatly help me understand this online content creator space that I am still quite intimidated by. I'm gonna be honest, I don't really want to blow up or become super popular. I just want a good MMO, and on some level, I am scared that if I grow too big, I will compromise the very thing that I started this journey for, enjoying Steven's vision to its fullest. But anyway, that's besides the point. I just wanted to add this onto the end for the usual viewers to address any thoughts that you may have had about the channel's direction lately. I cannot express just how much I appreciate you guys, so just hold on a little longer and I'll see you in the next one because you're high on copium.